G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for another trade update. Monday has come and gone and business has concluded and uh, still not a whole lot of action. There has been a couple of trades and, and a little bit more conjecture around a few other deals going on. But of course, um, I don't know why I'm surprised this is dragging on and possibly more so than any other trade period that I can remember. But there is still a little bit to talk about. So we're going to cut straight to the chase. Actually, before we cut straight to the chase, um, I've got 141 subscribers to get to hit 32,000 subscribers by the end of the trade period. You guys have been fantastic. Heaps of new people have jumped on board. So I want to say thank you. But if there's anyone else that wants to see footy content, all year round and especially around trade and draft i'd appreciate it if you did subscribe and uh, also we're considering doing a live stream for the deadline day of the trade period so let me know in the comments if that's something you would be interested in tuning into all right now we're at the chase okay let's start off with a couple of pick swaps that happened this morning um one was reported over the weekend which was interesting between melbourne and essendon and there was also one between adelaide and melbourne so first of all adelaide traded pick 46 to Melbourne for Melbourne's future third round pick, um, which seems like an odd move. Adelaide don't have much of a presence in this year's draft. Uh, the reason this is, is because Adelaide are obviously dealing for James Peatling at the moment from the Giants, and the Giants have indicated they would rather future picks. GWS already have a pretty good hand in this year's draft, so a third round of this year wasn't gonna add much to their deal. So Adelaide have pushed that asset into the future, got Melbourne's future third, and um, well, we thought the Peatling deal was meant to happen today, at least certainly I did. Um, but for whatever reason, it is at least going to go until Tuesday. A GWS, I suppose GWS might be looking at pick swaps, but between the Giants and Adelaide, like what the hell else are they doing really? I can understand why a lot of these other deals are wrapped up and contingent on other deals, but I don't know why <laughs> Adelaide and GWS, this deal, which we've known about for weeks, is now going to go to Tuesday of the second week. I don't know. I don't know. It's the story of this trade period. At the end, I want to discuss whether you think trade period goes for too long. The other deal, which is interesting, this is the biggest move that happened today. So Melbourne traded for Essendon's pick nine. We heard a little bit about this over the weekend. They traded uh, in pick nine and Essendon's future third. And Essendon received a whole stack of points. So they got two second round picks in 28 and 40, two third round picks, 46 and 54 and pick 65, in addition to Melbourne's first rounder next year. So that's a good deal for Essendon on value. It did seem odd to me, so I'd sort of been pushing the idea. I said it as recently as a few days ago. I was like, Essendon are sitting pretty. They're going to get two first rounders this year. This must purely be because they think that a bid for Isaac Keiko or Kako might come before pick nine. That is the only justification I can think for Essendon doing this. Now, they do get some points that they probably needed, but perhaps I had underrated how early a bid for Kako was going to be, because if a bid came before pick nine, it would have been a bit of a disaster for Essendon. So this is a really good deal for them, getting the points to match a bid for him, and uh, also getting a first rounder into next year. And Melbourne continuing this little trend over the last couple of years, at least, of targeting high picks and at the expense of maybe some points value or whatever. They presumably just want to take two picks in this year's draft, the way it's sort of mapping out at the moment. Like they just got 46 from Adelaide. I presume that's going to go maybe to Brisbane for Harry Sharp. So we'll see what happens there. But Melbourne at five and nine are currently in this year's draft, targeting some top talent. I like the mindset. I'm not sure if I agree with it, but I kind of still like that they're being aggressive. Probably talk about that more in depth uh, once you know the trade period wraps up, but I wouldn't be surprised if Melbourne are not done trading for picks and trying to move up potentially with North. Speaking of North, the Bombers apparently rejected an offer from North Melbourne for pick nine in this year's draft. So it doesn't say exactly what North Melbourne offered, but North probably looking to shuffle down potentially a few spaces or at least get another pick in this year's first round, presumably to get access to another tall. If they can get two talls out of this year's first round, I think they'll have done very well. So obviously they've had a crack and Essendon have preferred to deal with Melbourne instead. I guess the extra points is the sticking point there. All right, a little bit on Dan Houston, but um, I mean, this is the closest we got to a deal being agreed, but it was eventually uh, rejected. So this was the deal that I saw on Twitter and uh, I'm not sure where it came from. I think Trade Radio put it up. Either way, I'll chuck it on the screen for you. Bearing in mind, this was rejected, but this was the first mapping out of a potential deal um, in totality that we've really seen. So Port Adelaide, in this scenario, would have gotten Lacocious, Richards, Atkins, Rory Atkins, that's a new one, picks 13, 29, and 36, in exchange for Houston, their first rounder next year, 39 and 58. So if you assume that the first rounder this year and the first rounder next year cancels out, Houston would have got them Lacocious, Richards, and Atkins. So yeah, again, like I think Lacocious is a good player, but on value, like it's a lot to try and expect that to extract Dan Houston as such. 
uh, Port Adelaide rejected that. Collingwood in this scenario would have gotten Dan Houston at 58 for a future first, Richards, Noble, and 36. It kind of reminds me of like those old PlayStation games um, where you like AFL ones where you could just trade a bunch of medium assets to get one amazing player. I'm not saying Collingwood's not giving up a decent amount. Like that's kind of all they have to offer really in this scenario, but as we know, it didn't get done. So long story short, uh, that deal may or may not happen still. Like it's just so much water to go under the bridge and it's hard to imagine Port Adelaide getting much more from those two clubs. Tom Morris has also said, Dan Houston would go to Collingwood or Carlton. He doesn't want to go to North, St Kilda or Melbourne. I still believe Collingwood is more likely because they are pushing for 13. If it came down to North Melbourne or staying at Port, it would be an awkward situation. For that's from Tom Morris suggesting that North Melbourne's not a real contender here. Sam Edmund also said the Suns had their heads turned by North Melbourne's increasing enthusiasm and a compelling offer for pick 13. So again, North targeted Essendon's nine, uh, which has grown since the Ds went elsewhere. Of course, the Ds not longer, no longer going for 13 because they have nine. North's offer has Gold Coast deciding today, being Monday, whether to drop the multi-club deal with Collingwood and Port and do trade deals separately. This would throw that Houston deal into chaos. If North Melbourne can secure pick 13, then that cannot go to Port Adelaide, presumably, for Houston, unless that is exactly what North Melbourne want to achieve. They're probably thinking they want the pick to get the tall, potentially. Uh, but they also would screw Collingwood out of the Houston deal, pretty much. And just to throw more chaos into this Bloody Dan Houston thing. Cal Toomey has then said, Carlton is back in the Dan Houston mix. As the Pies weigh up their moves for pick 13, and then Houston, the Blues are considering their play given they hold 12 and 14. He points out it is Graham Wright's first official day at the Blues today. could be influential. So, yeah, weird time for him to have his first day at the club, obviously in the middle of trade period. But, yeah, I suppose, you know, Carlton's was were trying to get pick three from West Coast. That was rejected. So perhaps they're now saying, okay, maybe we do go for Houston after all. And they could still be a contender given, you know, the, the Houston to Collingwood deal looks like it's still a fair way off happening. Or is it? I don't know. But we know that Port Adelaide rejected probably the best offer they could receive in that scenario. So we'll see what happens. But it is just, it's just a deal I kind of want to disassociate from for the time being. But nonetheless, I have to do my job and, and try and wrap it for you. Bit of talk on the Richmond deal. So um, a little bit of clarification around Dan Rioli. Gold Coast is getting close to landing him with the sun set to part ways with six and 23. So we know Richmond wanted more than six. Gold Coast were reluctant and it looks like Gold Coast might buckle a little bit given Rioli's contract and status. So six and 23 might be the deal, in which case Richmond have got an outstanding deal there. On Bolton and Baker, um, again, we've just seen a little bit more um, suggestion that Baker will get to West Coast, and nonetheless, we know Fremantle are having a crack. A little side note on um, Matthew Owies. So uh, that looks like he's definitely not going back to Carlton, and I think Sam Edmund said that Gold Coast and West Coast are the two teams interested, and then Tom Morris subsequently said that West Coast are the leading contender there. He didn't say that with much confidence, but perhaps it's West Coast that are the most interested. Either way, Owies has got to move into state, so uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens here, but it might be as a delisted free agent. Let's talk about Bailey Smith. Um, this one is interesting. There is a distinct possibility that it goes um, to the national draft or the preseason draft, which I, I realize that people have been saying, and I've been skeptical. I thought a deal would get done. Um, nonetheless, it's just that the, the Cats are willing to offer 17, and the Dogs are saying, no, we want something in the top 10. Now, what will happen next is really interesting. If the Bulldogs refuse to deal in for pick 17, what happens? I mean, I understand there's mechanisms where he can still get to Geelong. But it's interesting that they're suggesting it would be a national draft that Bailey Smith would enter and not the preseason draft. So as a disclaimer, I am going to suggest that I'm probably misunderstanding here, but my understanding of the difference between nominating for the national or the preseason draft is in the preseason draft, a player can nominate his contract length and uh, size. In the national draft, if Bailey Smith goes into the national draft, not only can anyone pick him up, and that's the same for the preseason draft, but if he goes in the first round, let's say Geelong draft him at that pick 17, as a first round draft pick, is he not on a stipulated three year, $100,000 a year contract? And as we saw with the Harley Reid situation this year, we know there's a rule where they can't extend that contract or change it at all until like April of that year. So why would Bailey Smith go into the national draft and not the preseason draft? I'm aware that Luke Ball did this in 2011. Must have been 09 actually. But uh, yeah, if anyone has any clarification on that, I'd love to hear it. But yeah, long story short, uh, it could go that way for Bailey Smith. Read some conflicting things around Caleb Daniel today. Um, as we left it, the last thing I said was that the Bulldogs aren't particularly keen 
for tra to trade him and that he's not necessarily trying to get out. We also know that North Melbourne offered pick 25 for Caleb Daniel and 48, which was rejected by the Western Bulldogs. So there's at least a trade negotiation going on. Um, what Daniel wants it remains to be seen exactly. However, in that same article, it says North Melbourne's pick 25 could pave the way for Caleb Daniel to land at Arden Street, which is confusing to me because that just got rejected. Um, so unless it's pick 25 for Daniel outright with not 48 going back, I am not too sure. And it is also apparent that Sydney are asking for pick 25 for Luke Parker. North Melbourne did reject that as well. So that 25 is uh, potentially going to get moved for a player one way or another. I'd imagine it doesn't go for Luke Parker. It could go for Caleb Daniel, but not a lot of strong noise about that. And to wrap up, yeah, what do we think about trade period? I think I can guess that a lot of the reaction will be that it's too long. Um, you've got so many different perspectives on this. So I think, you know, fans probably agree it goes too long. Most of us have trade period blue balls at this point, uh, particularly this one. This one feels particularly drawn out. My potentially unpopular opinion here is that it only matters what list managers think about how long trade period should be. So we know that the AFL and the media in general, and perhaps myself too, benefit from a longer trade period because there's more to talk about and increased interest. So I'll put that on the table. I, that, from that point of view, it suits me if there's a longer trade period. Um, I agree as a fan, I am frustrated by the drawn out nature of this particular trade period. But at the end of the day, I think it only matters what list managers say. If, if you can get a consensus of what list managers think is necessary for deals to get done, if they can say, no, nah, we could have done this in three days, then that's what I would go for. But considering how drawn out some of this is, I don't know how short we could realistically make it. I don't know if I'd make it any longer. What is it, 10 days? Like you get the full week and then you get to Wednesday. So that's eight business days. I don't think it needs to be any longer, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, that, that's where I sit on it. As, as frustrating it is, as it is for fans, I think the most important, in fact, the only important thing is that list managers have the time they need because they are getting more complicated trade periods in terms of like, you know, points and, and pick swaps. It's getting a lot more intricate. So I don't know how much time they need, but I suppose that's my take on it. But let me know in the comments what you think below and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Cheers.